bit because I, I think a lot of the things when we talk about the karambit, um, first of all, it is not a Filipino or indigenous Filipino weapon, as a lot of people think. We embrace it as Filipinos from Filipino martial arts because it's a knife. It's a curved blade. But the beauty of that is it's really when I discovered it and I, I learned it was from Indonesia and Malaysia. So that's you know, my take on the karambit. And when I started researching it, yeah, I found it in the Philippines, but I already found out also that these were things that the, the blade makers were getting into it and they were starting to get popular. So started creating it because we have a bladesmithing culture in the Philippines. But when I really looked for it, I go, do you have the weapon that's a karambit here in terms of, you know, people are saying, well, it's an agricultural weapon. I'm like, agricultural weapon, okay. And when I started finding it, they had these sickles. You know, they had the uh, the karit and all these things that for your cutting coconuts and palm and everything. Well, if you're holding it this way and it's a lot bigger, that's not a karambit. And it, it is, and it's also held overhand as opposed to the traditional underhand. So underhanded use of the karambit, especially the karambit is a smaller blade. It's a small punch dagger the way I learned it. And I was re referred to it, right? It's very small. Modern interpretation now has make it, made the karambit much bigger. The man, bigger, the better. If you have a long blade here and you're holding it this way, you don't have much of strength in it. That's why we don't fight with blades down here. You know, I mean, it's really about overhanded. When you're using it overhanded, you have a lot of strength with that. That's why you chop trees this way. You don't chop trees even with a long blade this way. It's not as powerful. But if you make it smaller and smaller and smaller, now you have the ability to move with it. 